Hello everybody and welcome to the latest edition of Hartwig Game Changing Technologies. Today's episode we're going to talk about machining centers, specifically some of what's going on with Akuma and the latest mills. You know, last time we talked about lathes and automation, so we're turning it around, going to talk machining centers here. We actually have an overview on three different machining centers, different kind of platforms. Uh, the Genos M460 5-Ax, we're going to talk 5-axis machining. We're going to talk a little bridge milling with the uh, MB80V, a little teaser for that machine. And we have the M5000H2, uh, the big machining center. So um, we're going to check all those out here. I have got Wade Anderson. He's going to be answering questions at the end of this. And uh, of course, if you have any questions as this is going on, please put them in the Q&A box and we'll address them at the end. Thank you guys and enjoy the show. Hello, my name is Errol Burrell. I'm the machine center product specialist for Akuma. Today I'm here to talk about the Genus M465VX, a machine that can be described in four words. That's reliable, accurate, powerful, and more importantly, affordable. The Genus M465VX is equipped with a high-precision ball screws and oversized linear guide blades, which provide smooth and accurate movement on all three axes, allowing for better control of the machining process. The very popular 15K spindle, which comes on a variety of our platforms, horizontals as well as vertical, it has less vibration, less power loss to the tool tip, and produces 199 newton meters of torque. All of this delivers excellent surface finishes for a variety of parts, materials, and applications. This is a trunnion for the Genus M465VX. As you can see, it's a very huge, heavy construction, and supported, dual supported on both sides of the A-axis, and also an integrated C. Both axes are driven by high precision, high point gears. But what are the benefits of, of construction like this? Well, the benefits are thermal stability, rigidity, accuracy, and very, very dynamic. Akuma's thermal friendly concept increases accuracy by compensating for ambient temperatures around the machine, as well as for the heat generated during machining. The 5-axis auto tuning system maintains precise machining and easily fine tunes the machine by measuring geometric errors and making automatic adjustments as needed. Thanks for taking the time to look at the new standard in 5-axis. Now, why don't you experience the incredible capable machining at a reasonable price point? The Horizontal Machining Center can be one of the most productive machines in any manufacturing shop. Today we're going to talk about the fastest horizontal Akuma has ever produced. Hi, I'm Wade Anderson, Product Specialist Manager for Akuma America Corporation. With me today is Matt Abel, our Lead Machining Center Application Engineer. Matt, let's talk about the machine to start with, with what I consider to be the heartbeat of any machining center, and that's the spindle itself. I know our previous generation machines, we had a 15K Cat 40 or a 20,000 RPM Cat 40 spindle option. This newest generation, we're bringing in a lot more power with a Cat 50 Big Plus spindle. Tell us a little bit about what that means. Sure. So the Cat 50 option with this machine, as we see it right now, is 12,000 RPM. 
It's 33 kilowatts of power and 302 newton meters of torque. Excellent. So when we talk about a big plus, I know that's dual taper, dual contact. So you've got contact on the taper, you've got contact to the face of the spindle itself. Why is that important to customers? Why does that matter? Well, in a, a long application where tools are sticking out longer, that allows the tool to be more rigid and it becomes more accurate because okay. you have the dual contact, the taper, and on the face. All right, so every time that tool makes a tool change, it comes into a known position in the Z-axis. That's correct. So this machine is all about speed. So we're combining power, speed, and accuracy. I know the B-axis, this is a completely redesigned B-axis in this model. What have we done different to this machine to be able to increase the speed of that B-axis indexing? So we have added a cam roller gear to the movement of the B-axis. Okay. So that provides really smooth operation. The cam roller gear itself has less than a micron clearance between the rollers and the cam. And we're going from zero to 90 in Under what? a second. Under a second, fantastic. Some other things we've done to speed up this machine, we increase the jerk rates on the machine itself as well as the acceleration rates. What kind of acceleration do we see on this? So in the X and Z axis, we're at 1G, okay. and at Y, we're at 1.1G. Let's talk about the shower coolant and the chip flow itself. We're putting in a more powerful spindle. We're increasing the, the speeds of the machine itself. We can get a lot more chip removal rates. All of that is meaningless unless I can get the chips out of that work enclosure. What all have we done to be able to increase our chip flow out of the machine into the chip bins in the back? Okay, to start with, we have a one-piece Z-axis weight cover. So instead of using telescoping weight covers, mm -hmm. we are using a one-piece Z-axis. Okay. That eliminates the chips from getting underneath the, the weight covers and causing downtime. We've also added saddle flush coolant, top shower coolant, and we also have curtain coolant on the X and Y axis to eliminate any jamming of chips in, in the, in the weight right. covers. Let's talk a little bit about the control itself. I know there's some features like the speed up function where in the past you would have to have a, a really highly educated engineer to be able to get into the control, get down into the parameters itself to fine tune and optimize the cutting process. Now we've moved this to more of a graphical interface yes. and made it a lot more simple to be able to access. Can you talk a little bit about that? So we have a easy set button on this for our cycle time reduction. Okay. Our cycle time reduction eliminates unnecessary movement in the machine and allows the machine to run faster cycle time reduction. So that's a perfect example where if you've got a bolt hole pattern, for an example, if you're an automotive production house and you're drilling a lot of bolt holes, instead of everything going up to exact positions, you can loosen up that tolerance and round those positions over and get from hole to hole much faster. Then I heard you mention about a different home position. What does that do for an operator or the cycle time itself? So as the machine is currently configured, the Z axis will move all the way back before this will do a tool change. So we can move our safe position closer, yes. do tool changes so we don't have as much dead time of unnecessary axis motion. That's correct. All right, that is called up in a part program as well, right? So once you save that, you can define where your new home position is, save that to the part program, then call that up later in, in a G-code type yes, format, correct? Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the APC itself. So we move around to the front. This APC is very ergonomically friendly. So it's at a really good operator height to be able to access it. We have a foot pedal access to unlock the Lazy Susan or the B-axis, if you will, to be able to spin this around. Tell us a little bit about pallet pools. What kind of options do we have that's available to take this from a two APC, which gives you a lot of unmanned operation by having a pallet changer, what happens when we go to a 6, 8, 10, 12 pallet pool? So that's a great question, and the great thing about this is it's a very affordable option. You can add a 6, 10, or 12 pallet pool system to this, and what that does is it allows you to queue up the machine to run lights out. So okay. lights out, you queue up 6 pallets, you queue up 10 pallets, you queue up 12 pallets, and you go home. All right. And the machine will run, and when it's finished, it'll sit here and wait for you. This can also be easily added to an FMS system. Yep. So a pallet pool typically would be a single machine with one pallet pool connected to that machine. We go to an FMS system, we would stack up multiple of these machines with a long pallet system, if you will, a racking system that would feed the entire production system. Sure. All right, let's move around to the ATC. Let's talk about uh, some of the new ATC options that we've got on this Series 2 machine. I'm gonna open up this panel, swing this open allow people to have an inside look. 
This is our latest generation machine with a disc style ATC. What, is, what are we looking at for a tool to tool time on this? Tool to tool time is under a second. Okay, fantastic. So in a, say an automotive type production house, again, where speed is the most important consideration that you get into, a disc type ATC gives us the fastest tool change allowed on, on a machine like this. But let's say we're jumping into a pallet pool system or into an FMS system. Do we have other options available to take us into uh, larger tool capacity? Sure, so we have a belt system for a 100 tool. This is a configured in 60. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a matrix system that goes all the way up to 266 tools. These are extremely fast tool change times. Some of the things that I noticed when we open this up, there's a lot of sheet metal that's been added. So any kind of chips, coolant contamination, goes straight into a coolant trough that gets pumped back into the coolant system itself. Matt, I appreciate your time today talking about the new MB5000H Mark II. I appreciate you guys coming on this virtual tour with us. Please make sure you check out all the other videos available by Akuma. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. We're gonna to go to live Q&A here. So remember, if you have any questions, put those below in the Q&A box. Thank you for watching. You make me turn my camera on, aren't you, Greg? <laughs> How are you, Wade? I'm good. You know, one thing I hate is seeing myself on video and uh, I broke a cardinal rule. My dad always told me, he said, anytime you're gonna be on video, wear a really good sport jacket. Oh. So why is that? And he said, well, it takes the focus off your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. That's good. Hey, nice job with the video. I thought uh, you guys, your video was really good. And the explanation of the MB5000 Mark II was great. So um, That's an exciting machine. You know, it's uh, the newest generation of horizontals we've got. So uh, Matt's a phenomenal AE and he did a really good job too. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any uh, questions that have come in. Uh, so far, but I did have a couple of questions for you because, uh, for quite honestly, I want your I want an answer from you. Uh, oh, and I no. won't put you on the spot. Yet. I'm <laughs> sure it's an answer you already know. Um, is it easy to automate the M465AX? Yes. So there's a couple of different ways to to look at that. So we are now bringing the 5AX in. Um, we're stocking them now with through pallet hydraulics. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has two hydraulic ports, two air ports. Um, so you can do a fixture on off and then you got a part seating confirmation uh, capability um, as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Gossier Automation uh, or Automation Within Reach has got their VBX series. Yep. And uh, we were actually going to, if we would have been physically on site at IMTS this year, that would have had uh, VBX mounted to the M465AX. Mm -hmm. And they had a basically like a pivot on it. So when you need operator access because the 460, that trunnion tilts to and away from the operator. Right. So you have to load it basically through the front door. Mm -hmm. So the VBX uh, series, they can actually pivot that out of the way. So you've got full operator access to the front of the machine. Then when you're ready to run, you just swing it back in place and let it go. So that's great. Yeah. yeah it's a, very, it's a very solution. system. Yeah. Um, are all these machines available and in, in stock today? Yes. So we've got uh, 460s. We've got a lot more coming um, through December, January, February. Um, yeah. But we do have inventory on, on all those machines. Yeah. It's neat to see that the big MB80V. That is a, it's a really nice new big machine yes. for mold and dye and uh, wafer manufacturing, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, we haven't had a machine like that in our arsenal uh, before, unless we look at the Millac series. Mm -hmm. But this is a little bit different animal. It's a bridge design. And it's something we just haven't seen before from Akuma, so it's, it's nice a, to see the product. It's a bridge design, and it's a linear way system. Um, so your acceleration, deceleration rates are better. Um, you mm -hmm. know that Millac is a phenomenal machine, um, and for for the right application, you know there's there's certain applications that are meant for Millacs versus an MB series uh, machine. But that linear guide allows you to accelerate to get to your acceleration rate much faster than a boxway machine. Mm -hmm. Usually you have to really soften your jerk rates on a, any kind of a boxway machine. Um, so to try to wrap it and get up to a full rapid takes a little bit more momentum to get that up and running. Right. <clears throat> I have a question that just came in, a gentleman named Travis. 
uh, said, my applications require a lot of probing. Do you have any experience with integrating a Renishaw Sprint scanning probe and a machine like an MB8000H? Yes. I, I personally am not familiar with the Sprint, but are you, Wade? A little bit, yeah. Um, we've done Sprint in Japan. We have not incorporated it in America yet. So we've done it on some aerospace applications in Japan. Um, it was shown at, I can't remember if it was Jim Toff or it might have been OMF, the Akuma Machine Fair. Yeah. Um, here about two years ago, um, but we have never had really a, a strong enough application to, to run it to ground here in America, but we do have experience with it in Japan. So we have integrated that. That's a, uh, that's a beast of a, of a probing package. Um, so it takes a lot of horsepower to run that. Um, there's special interfaces that's required to run it as well. Um, so if that's something that he's interested in, whether it's a existing machine or a new project, um, Greg, your guys would just put in an RPQ and we'd run that through engineering to make sure we uh, understand the application, make sure it's suited for what they're trying to do. Can you, because uh, every, everybody's still on, can you explain what it is or just a rough explanation of what it is? Sort of. Um, if I'd have known that okay. question was coming, I've got a good document <laughs> that talks through it. Um, okay. But it, it's a way to um, scan a, a lot of points and then look at what your part geometry should have been versus what you've got. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at it on an aerospace application where they friction weld blades into a ring. Mm -hmm. So the company pre-machined the ring. Instead of doing blisk, what they were doing is friction welding the blades into the ring itself. Mm -hmm. And what happens is every blade is off just a little bit. Oh. And then you get the ram's horn from the friction welding that you got to be able to blend in. Oh. Oh. So you would go through and actually... Uh, do a 3D scan basically of the blade of where it is versus where it should be, readjust your part program and then recycle through that and kind of automate that entire process. So it's, it was a it was a major undertaking in the end. They decided to, to go a different route instead of doing the friction welding. So that was the experience I've had with it. Hmm. That could be used in a lot of different applications, mold and dye, you know, lots of different applications and surfacing, whatever it might be. Um, Travis just asked another question. Um, I'm in remanufacturing, yeah. so probing old parts to minimize material removal. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Another one to look at along those lines, um, Bloom. Uh, they do a lot of probe scanning, and they do kind of similar stuff with their standard software because all of Bloom touch probes are actually lasers, even though it's it's got a physical stylus. Mm -hmm. the measuring device inside the bloom device is a is a laser unit so um, you don't get that trilobe <laughs> effect that you have on a typical uh, switch type probe so they do a lot in that field as well travis yeah interesting <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. um no other questions are here right now uh nothing else has come in but uh i would just want to say thank you wade and go ahead we're gonna say something well, I was just going to say, I'm going to jump you back to that MB80V. Um, you had talked about it. Um, we've sold a couple of those uh, to a couple of different applications so far. Um, but something to keep in mind here, we're about eight months away before we'll see it um, in North America. But that machine is offered with a 1600 millimeter table. Uh, we have an option for a two meter um, as well as an extended, extended Z-axis stroke as well. Um, so we've got some new uh, tools coming down the pipeline with that machine as well to get into some of this bigger work. So it's Great. really a small double column. You can do a lot right. with that. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks to everybody at Akuma for all your help today. Thanks to participants for, for logging in and hopefully you guys learned something. Um, we're going to be sending out the video link to, uh, tomorrow. So I, I, on our end, it was a little choppy. I apologize for that. Hopefully it wasn't as choppy on your end. Uh, if you get a chance to, to watch the link tomorrow. It should be a bit better. Uh, we're going to do what we can to fix those issues. Um, and uh, hopefully see you guys uh, uh, again next time. So, uh, Okuma, Wade, thank you very much. You guys did a great job. And all hey, the participants, have, thank you for joining us. We do have a question, one here from Travis. Oh, one last yeah, one. I see that. So, okay. Travis, that, that will be an extended Z-axis. Um, so right now, and I apologize, I don't have the spec in front of me, but I think right now it's a 600 millimeter uh, Z-axis, so either 6 or 650, somewhere in that realm. Um, and that will be offered uh, here shortly with a 750. So it's going to have a longer uh, saddle that the spindle runs on as well. Back to all you. Right. Greg. Great. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Take care, everybody. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.